Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. United States Navy vessels spent many years of service at sea, where they completed missions and provided protection of the waters. When these vessels reach the end of their operational life, they are decommissioned, which means they are officially retired from military service. When the weapons and other operationally sensitive gear are removed, they will no longer serve military purposes. Instead of being scrapped, these ships are about to be sunk to the ocean floor. These vessels will now be an artificial reef, hosting a new range of marine habitation and a place for divers to explore. These ships will remain valuable during their second life beneath the waves. Before a ship is intentionally sunk to create an artificial reef, it's cleaned to remove any possible toxic materials that might be released into the environment adversely affecting it. The intention is to choose an appropriate site and meticulously prepare the ship so that the sinking helps create new habitats for marine life, such as fish, corals, etc. Gradually, the artificial reefs, providing everything goes according to plan, will attract fish, and many different species will congregate in and around it, thereby increasing the biodiversity in the area. On the other hand, if the ship is not properly prepared or the site is inappropriate, then the process may harm the existing ecosystem. Therefore, planning and preparation are key to ensuring that it helps rather than harms the local ecosystem once the ship is submerged. To understand the intricate process of how a decommissioned vessel is transformed into an artificial reef, let's take the USS Oriskany as a prime example. An aircraft carrier built during World War II, the USS Oriskany was one of the U.S. Navy's mightiest war machines. From the time the World War II aircraft carrier was commissioned in 1950 until its decommissioning in 1976, from the time when it patrolled the Korean Peninsula to its later operation in the Vietnam War, this ship served the naval force for 26 active years. The ship spans a length of 911 feet, with a beam of 147 and a half feet. It's powered by eight boilers and four Westinghouse steam turbines, developing 150,000 horsepower and capable of reaching speeds of 33 knots. At the time, the USS Oriskany had 10 decks, and it operated with a crew of 2,600, with an additional embarked air wing of 2,100 personnel. On May 17, 2006, 22 sea connection pipes were carefully placed on the ship, as 500 pounds of explosives were used to implode compartments cutting strategically placed holes in the vessel in order to get the old girl to scuttle well. After less than 36 minutes, the ship's flight deck settled upon the seabed. 
known as the Great Carrier Reef, it's become a popular diving destination and a shining example of how decommissioned ships can be repurposed to benefit both humans and nature. Another example of a decommissioned ship that was given a second life is the Kraken. Like the USS Oriskany, the ship was adopted as part of an artificial reef program to improve marine habitats. After its preparation and repositioning, the Kraken was sunk at roughly 140 feet, about 65 miles off the coast of Galveston, Texas. The Gulf of Mexico has a sandy and muddy bottom and doesn't have the hard surfaces needed for various marine organisms to thrive, which is why ships like the Kraken are recycled as reefs. Within months, the ship was home to giant schools of baitfish and red snapper, along with various marine life that quickly populated the sinking vessel, making it a reef for divers to explore. In addition to the deployment of ships, abandoned oil platforms have also been a valuable asset to artificial reef programs. Oil rigs are ideal structures for coral and many invertebrates to attach and grow on the hard substrate. Once these structures are established, they attract a myriad of fish, including economically and recreationally important species such as red snapper. This is just one of the many examples in the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department's artificial reef program, which is composed of various ships, including Navy vessels that demonstrate the impact of the Navy and other agencies in restoring and developing marine environments. The development and transformation of old decommissioned ships into living reefs provides benefits not just to ocean life, but also to a reduction in fishing efforts on natural reefs for a possible sustainable future. Along with the creation of artificial reefs, as part of its expansive diving and salvage training program, the U.S. Navy utilizes ship sinking to conduct diver training. The program is based out of the Naval Diving and Salvage Training Center in Panama City, Florida, which is the world's largest diving training facility. In the program, Navy divers receive critical training in underwater ship repair, wreck salvage, and underwater demolition. Navy divers train in various environments to practice skills learned in the classroom, from contained pool training drills to real underwater salvage operations in the Gulf of Mexico. Divers are performing their training on decommissioned ships, including the Kraken and USS Oriskany to gain hands-on experience in scenarios where divers would be working during a shipboard scenario. The training has divers execute a range of preparations, including everything from ultra-deep sea dives using mixed gas systems and complex underwater cutting and welding techniques. dive operations that divers train on are critical in that Navy divers can be tasked to conduct search and rescue missions or recovery salvage for sunken vessels or perform emergency underwater repairs.
After discussing the intricate operations involved in Navy salvage and diving training, let's take a closer look at the Coimbra wreck, a highly technical and poignant example of both historical tragedy and modern salvage efforts. The ship was carrying 64,000 barrels of oil and was sailing to Britain when it was hit by two torpedoes, causing a tremendous explosion that severed the vessel into three pieces. In this attack incident, 36 of the 46 crew members lost their lives. Today, the wreck lies in approximately 180 feet of water, 30 miles off Shinnecock, New York. In recent years, the wreck became a significant environmental hazard associated with leaking oil out of the wreckage occurring on site in the state of North Carolina. The U.S. Coast Guard, in cooperation with Resolve Marine Group, undertook a massive salvage project to remove the oil in 2019. The operation lasted three months and removed more than 450,000 gallons of oil from the wreck, which was one of the largest fuel removal projects ever done on a World War II wreck in U.S. waters. The operation utilized divers and remotely operated vehicles to drill into the tanks, conduct oil tests, and pump the oil to the water surface. The oil was removed, treated, and disposed of in an environmentally sound manner. Divers were essential in the Coimbra Rex oil recovery operation. Diving 180 feet below the surface to drill into the ship's hull and connect pumping systems. Working with accurate navigational coordinates from the remotely operated vehicles in real time, the divers conducted 193 dives and managed to recover more than 476 gallons of oil over 90 days. This combined multi-layered approach to oil recovery ultimately salvaged the Coimbra from a potential environmental disaster. Their precise work, combined with advanced technology like remotely operated vehicles, not only mitigated a significant environmental risk, but also ensured the ship's transformation into an artificial reef benefiting marine life and local economies. This effort not only mitigated the potential for pollution, but also transformed the wreck into a valuable part of New York's artificial reef system, supporting both marine life and local industries. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.